Okay, today let's continue our conversation about practice. How do we use the practice tee in an effective way? We're going to talk more about administration and sequencing of the golf swing. So there's no better feeling knowing that when you wake up in the morning to go play golf, so that you're going to play well. There's no better feeling of hitting good golf shots down the fairway. So my mission today is to help as many people as possible wake up every day feeling good that they're going to go out there and play great because of the single plane swing. How do they know if they never felt it? That's what I always say. We're taking lessons from an 80 shooter to shoot your 80. We're taking lessons from a 75 shooter to shoot your 75. Because that's all they know. That's the way I hit it. Do that get the master position? What? Want to go chance three? <laughs> Every time? Like a jet? Like sending a message? I'll tell you that, you know. I'll never, I'll never not in this world. I never have, and I probably never will. Oh, that's why you're in this world. You know, I, I do believe that someday some young player will come along. I hope so. And, and you'll be a great player. <laughs> Today I want to give credit to one of my coaches in Graves Golf, Trent White. We have some great go coaches here at Graves Golf, and when we work together, to help as many students as possible master the single plane swing. But Trent, so this is, this is a, a dedication to Trent today because he kind of came up with this drill and I'm gonna show you what it is. I'm not a, as you know, I'm not a huge fan of drills because I like motion and drills sometimes limit motion and they, they you're gonna learn whatever you practice. You're gonna learn whatever you repeat. So when people kind of get into a drill, it's hard to take them out of that drill in, back into the full swing motion. But today we're gonna talk about how do we work on sequencing of the swing which is hard to do because here's one of the things and the fundamental principles of the way the body works and I'm going to kind of go through it with you. In the golf swing, it's really not rocket science here, but the, bo the body is a complicated machine. It has levers and joints and hinges and it's got appendages and arms and then you have this torso and so it's a lot of moving parts. So you can look at this, wow, it's very complicated. So isn't our goal to simplify the motion of these parts and then put them in the proper sequence in order to move this club in a way that effectively comes down in a very consistent way to hit the ball, which is why Mo Norman, by the way, was the greatest ball striker that's ever played the game because he figured out through in his intuitive and lots of practice a simple way to get the ball to strike squarely at impact every time. So we want to work on sequencing. Now sequencing is this, and let's back up one step, and you're going to see in this practice series what's so important. I have, a, I have a product I produced last year called the domino effect. What exactly was the domino effect? Well, it, it makes sense, right, that, that everything relates to the next. I'll give you a couple examples. If, if you grip the club, so your hands, when you place them on the club, now that, the position of my hands, whether it's whatever rotation they're in, create a relationship, and anyway, anyway there's a, a face relationship to my hands. You'd have to agree with that, because you're not moving the hands once you grab the club. So that relationship, whether no matter where it's at, determines what rotation the arms must be in to get that square to the target. 
So for example, if that, for example, I'll, exa I'll exaggerate that, but let's say that hand is now in that relationship to the face, which is obviously very, very shut or not very good. If I want to get that face to the target, wouldn't I have to rotate my hands and arms that direction, right? So you can see that my relationship of my hands to the club face affects my arm rotation. This is a critical thing to understand because most people take so much of this stuff for granted. They just grab the club, okay, good enough, and it's not good enough, and all of a sudden now the club face is incorrect, the arms are incorrect, and now they start building a body motion, a sequence, around incorrect positions. You'd be surprised at how many times I've seen a, an incorrect grip affect the motion of the body to a point where now, and here's the real problem, and I know you can relate to this, now you start doing reps, right? You start practicing, you go to the range, you start hitting balls and playing lots of golf with a bad position of the hands, let's say, and now you're repeating it over and over and again. Pretty soon, pretty soon now, you've got a terrible hook in your game or a slice or whatever, and it's because you built it from what? Simply having the hand on there incorrectly. This is why I'm very particular about positions. So today, we're gonna talk about how, do, how does, this, does this all relate and then how do I work on it? So one of the things that Trent came up with, when we were developing people's positions of the swing, you know, I've talked about the backswing, I've talked about the downswing, so you see all the stuff in my channel. Now how do we work on sequence, right? How do we work on sequence? Well, Trent developed this drill we call 026. Why do we call it that? Well, zero is what we consider the address position. This is just your starting position, zero. Position two is the backswing, which I talked about in the last video, the position here at the top, which is two. Six, believe it or not, is all the way into finish. So now, if I start correctly, everything's good. I hit my backswing correct, everything's good. And I hit my finish position, and I hold that for just for a second, everything's good. Whatever happens in between is the sequence of events. Trent came up with this because in my K-Motion 3D system, we work on the positions of the motion. If your positions are not good, you cannot sequence. Keep that in mind. If you do not hit your positions, you will not sequence correctly. So now, if you hit these two, if you hit this ideal address, and you hit the ideal position at the top, and you get all the way into your finish, and you can hold it, you can hold that finish, the likelihood of you having good sequence is very high. So let's go through this, and I'll hit one here. Let's go, up to, again, make sure your address position is great. There's zero. Top of the backswing, two. And let me, just, let me describe this a little bit to you, for you. At the top, notice I'm bracing around that trail leg. That is allowing me to stop the top of the backswing. I don't want to slide because that is incorrect, two. And then I'm going to basically go into the knee and hold my, my position into my flex knee for my finish position six. I want to hit position, position, position. Zero, two, six. Don't swing hard. Hit all those positions. Here we go. Zero, feeling good. Two, feeling good. Six, hold. And I like to hold that finish just for a little bit. Why? Because your body learns if your sequence good, you should be in balance. You should have the weight on the lead leg. You should be able to feel the position, the tilt of the body, holding the finish. At my golf schools, with the coaches, we always recommend hold that finish for just a fraction of a second. Okay, let's go ahead and go zero to six. So watch this. So go ahead and do address zero. We're gonna go to two. So here we go. Zero. Make sure it feels good. Get to two. Hold it for a second. Hold your finish, six. And look at my weights on my lead leg. It's amazing because, just a little science for you here. One of the reasons that we were discussing how this, why this works so well, and why it's helping people sequence is that most people are weak in the finish position. What, I'm, what do I mean by that? Well, this is one of the most bent, side bent, and rotated positions of your body throughout the entire swing motion. And if this position is hard for you, if it's difficult for you here, right? I mean, this is where the, the body is rotated, it's also stopped, and the arms have gone quickly through, through this position. That is, a, we, we, our research has shown that that's one of the most difficult positions of everybody. People who get good at golf 
have developed that side of their golf swing. Well, here's the science behind it. If you are weak on this side, so if you're, if you're not very good at this, then what, here's what happens subconsciously to you. You go from zero, you go to two, and then you subconsciously know that you can't go there, so you flip early, you stop early, you lean back, you do a lot of things that slow the body down, right? So our research in science has shown that if you develop this position at the end, which we call six, and you hold it, and you get good at this, strong at this, then you learn to go there with more repetition and more efficiency. That's very important. So Trent came up with this 026 idea, and it's been one of the most helpful concepts in our training in the sense that it now helps you hit your positions, develop sequence, and help that finished position. So here we go, 026 again. Zero, address, two at the top, hold, hold your finish, six. And of course, Mo would finish standing up, but we consider the finished position where the body has stopped and the arms have stopped, that's what we consider the complete finish, then you can stand up like Mo did at the end. Anyway, I hope this helps, hope it helps work on your sequence. I hope it's helping you understand the processes you can use when you practice, because there's lots of types of practice. This is one of them. Thanks for joining me today. Don't forget, subscribe, click that bell icon, give me some comments and a thumbs up if you like this content.